As long as we had the house, everything was perfect. Nothing was wrong. The living room and dining room were for display. We didn't go in though. Well, my mother went in the living room at night to drink her cocktails and smoke, but we didn't. We only had Sunday and holiday dinners in the living room, in the dining room. The rest of the time it sat empty. I had to dust and vacuum them. My mother was so proud of her furniture. She'd knock the table with her fists like it was a generations old heirloom and say, when I die, Donna's gonna get the table and Patrick will get my car. The gold velvet cushions still had plastic over them and the wood curve in the back of the chairs I figured out during one long agonizing dinner was just wood finish over plastic. Why would I want this table after she was dead? It was just a piece of middle class junk. The only good things about the dining room were my father's stereo, and sometimes on Sundays when he'd bring out his movie projector and show us W.C. Fields or old boxing movies. I loved them. He showed me how to wind the projector and to make it go fast or slow, and we watched old Rocky Marciano <clears throat> and Sugar Ray Robinson fight. I hated Sundays in general because we had to go to church. Dad never came with us. Then we had dinner when we got back. We weren't allowed to talk at the table, and dinner seemed to go on forever. If it wasn't football time, we'd watch movies. Otherwise, I'd lie on the floor and read the comics. It came so I would dread Sundays. Church was agonizing for me. My mother's routine in church was getting worse by the year. She started scoffing at the statue of St. Anthony on the way out, kneeling and staring up in his eyes, praying with her eyes open. <laughs> I'd stand there uncomfortably as everyone in my neighborhood and school filed past me while my mother was on her knees, staring up into St. Anthony's eyes. I'd shut my eyes and pretend it wasn't happening, and every week it seemed to get worse. I didn't understand because she went to Novena on Thursday nights. Didn't she talk to St. Anthony enough? She also prayed to him for her car keys that she lost every day. Did she have to put me through this too? When I got home, I'd stand over the stove, emptying an envelope of gravy mix into a pan, pouring roast beef drippings into it, making a figure eight like she taught me. Or so she said. Mostly I taught myself in cookbooks I checked out of a library. I would make eights over and over again so the gravy wouldn't get lumpy, and we would eat in silence. If my brother and I would start to talk, my father would say, don't talk, eat. The only time we did talk would be at holidays, or if you'd have a friend over. That would be fun, like when he had his crazy friend Rollo over. Who was that guy? And I made Rollo wish with my magic wand, or Tommy Brady, his oldest friend. My mother was mad because Tommy immediately laid down on the couch after eating, and she complained about it for weeks. Tom never came to our house again. When I was a teenager, I stayed at my friend Maria's in Dorchester. Her large Irish family would gather at the table, and I'd hide in her room, too scared to come out. Her mother would ask what was wrong with the girl in her room. I didn't know what to do. I was too scared to sit at another family's table and talk to them. I didn't know.